Hi everyone, I am here with a review of Viola Lesson 5, and this week we continued to practice reading and playing the notes on the D string, and we also kept working on that bow hold and using our bow while we were playing. I had the chance this week to hear everyone play something for me on their own and give some suggestions for improving that bow hold and the tone with their bow, and I have a list here of some suggestions that I think are will be good for everyone to hear and to continue to work on. So when using the bow, make sure that you have a beautiful bow hold. So we spent a lot of time last week working on this bow hold. And if you're sure, still not sure about it, you can go back and watch um, the lesson four review. But this bow hold isn't just to look good or to make sure that we all look the same. It actually sets your whole right arm up for success. It makes you ready to use nice full bows and to stay in the sweet spot and to make sure you stay on the correct string. All of those things that we've been talking about, this bow hold sets you up for. So if you're doing something weird with your hand, it actually is going to make it much harder for you to be successful in using the bow. I just was talking about the sweet spot. Make sure that your bow is in the sweet spot when you're playing. So remember, it's in between this bridge and this fingerboard, so your bow should be around here. If your bow is up over the fingerboard area, um, it's going to be very hard to stay on one string. And if your bow is over the bridge, you're going to get this very squeaky sound. So we're looking for right in between those two spots for the sweet spot. Also, make sure you are on the correct string. That bow needs to be on the right string. We practiced doing those rainbows last week, making sure that if you need to play notes on the D string, that your bow is on the D string. Also, make sure that you are pressing hard enough to grip the string. So we're not getting that like skating tone where you can't really quite hear what pitch you're trying to play. You're pressing, you're digging into the string and gripping it to get a nice tone. And that's something that we will continue to work on in lessons as well. Uh, make sure you, you are using enough bow. Let me demonstrate this one for you. I had a lot of students this week play like this. Where they were doing everything correct, they had a nice bow hold, they were putting their fingers in the right spot, and they were in the sweet spot um, with the bow, but they just were getting that crunchy sound with the bow. You need to use a little bit more like this. To get that nice tone. Um, you'll notice that I'm kind of avoiding this bottom part and this very, very top part. We generally, for beginners, will tend to use this middle section first before we start using full bows, and eventually we'll do full bows, but for right now, just that, that middle section is what we're looking for. And just another reminder to make sure that bow is getting loosened before it goes in the case to make sure it stays in good shape um, to keep using for the rest of the year. Okay, so for this week, we want to make sure that we are comfortable reading and playing these five notes. This graphic comes right from the top of page seven in your lesson book. And um, these five notes are D, which is your open D string, one finger on D, which makes the note E, two fingers, which makes the note F sharp, three to make the note G, and then your open A string. So these five notes, you should have them down by next week. And next week, we actually are going to be learning a piece of music called the Peru Blue Boogie, and it uses all five of these notes. So we want to make sure that we're all set to go for that next week. Our homework um, is sort of reinforcing these notes, making sure that we know how to read them. Um, and we're actually starting with number 14 for this week. And um, you can see now that all of those notes that we've been working on reading are together in one exercise. So before we play anything, I still would suggest that you go through and read the notes. Um, if you have any questions about what the notes are, here's that graphic that I was just showing you. You can always look down here and, uh, and double check to make sure you are reading the correct note. Um, let's look at 14 and actually what I would suggest you do is pause the video and try to read the notes on your own, then come back and I will read them with you. So I'll see you in a couple seconds once you finish reading them. Okay, so here we go with reading the notes for 14. Remember, I'm going to say F instead of F sharp just to make it a little bit easier. Here we go. D, 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 E, F, 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 G. F, 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 E, D, 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 rest. E, 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 F, G, 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 F, E, E, F, F, D, 
D, D, rest. Good. So now before we use the bow, I would still recommend that we do a little bit of pizzicato first. That's going to make sure that our left hand knows what's going on before we add the right hand stuff. So I'm going to put my viola up. Remember, your thumb is hanging out on this side nice and relaxed. I'm going to hover those fingers over all the spots where they're going to need to be. There's a lot to get ready this week, and, and that's, uh, that's something that we'll keep working on getting quicker at. But for right now, it's okay to stop and check all of these things before you need to play. I'm going to get my pizzicato set, and now I'm going to go with playing 14. So here we go. D, 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 E, F, 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 G, F, 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 E, D, 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 rest. E, 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 F, G, 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 F, E, E, F, F, D, 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 rest. Good. So if you feel comfortable with doing that pizzicato, now's the time that we would add in the bow. If you're still a little bit unsure about that, keep practicing the pizzicato first, then add in the bow once you are ready. So before we play with the bow, remember we're going to set our beautiful bow hold. So a nice relaxed hand, middle on the metal there, pinky up, and then our nice bent thumb. Okay, so it just looks something like this. Make sure you have your beautiful bow hold before you start. Okay, get our viola up. Now all that left hand stuff that we worked on before should be all set already. Set your bow on the D string, and here we go with 14. Good. So if you are feeling um, comfortable with that, with number 14, we're going to move on to our next exercise. If not, it's okay to take a little bit of extra time to work on this. So it takes a little bit longer for some people to catch on to this note reading thing. It is a big challenge. So we're going to make sure that we're showing a lot of grit when we're practicing. Um, we did not do 15 for this week. We actually skipped down to number 16 on page 7. And let's take a look here. Number 16 starts on three finger G on the D string. Okay, and it actually ends on our open G. So keep that in mind as you're reading these notes. Um, when you pause the video this time, try to see if you can read the notes and play through them pizzicato. Okay, so two jobs now. So I'll see you back here in a couple minutes. All right, here we go. Number 16, and we're going to read our notes first. G, G, F, F, G, G, E, E, G, G, D, D, G, 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 rest. D, D, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, rest. D, rest, G, 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 rest. Good. Now, hopefully you were able to get through the pizzicato part on your own when you had paused the video a little, a uh, couple of seconds ago. I'm going to skip the pizzicato part and just go right to the bow so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. So I'll set my three fingers up. One, two, three. Setting the bow on the D string and then also just make sure that you realize that you're going to have to tilt it over to get to that low G at the end. Okay, here's number 16. G, G. Rest, rest, rest. 
good. So for number the last two, um, 17 and 18, I actually am going to leave all the, the practicing steps, the reading the notes, and the playing pizzicato up to you um, to do throughout the week as you are practicing. But I will play them for you so you know what they are supposed to sound like. So here's 17. Note that it starts on your open A string. So now we're using um, so those open A's. We haven't played those yet today. So I'm going to set my bow on open A, and here's what it should sound like. Oh, that's not A. Here we go. I thought I was playing a violin for a minute. Here is really number 17. A, 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 D. Rest, rest. A, D, E, F, F, G, G, D. Rest. Rest, rest. And number 18, which starts on an E, one finger on the D string. Here's what 18 should sound like. So those are the four exercises for this week, number 14, and then 16, 17, and 18. Um, keep working on reading those notes. Keep working on getting a good tone with the bow. And I will see you at your next lesson to play that Peru Blue Boogie.